after better than a half century at historic Freedom Hall, the Louisville Cardinals christen a new building here tonight. The first regular season again for their men's team of the KFC Yum Center, coinciding with our 21 of the College Hoops tip-off marathon. It is a great environment. Better than 22,000 people are here for the Yum Center as the Cardinals take on a team that went all the way to the national championship game a year ago, the Butler Bulldogs. This should be good. Butler is ranked again. They've got a lot of talent back from the national runners-up from a year ago. And Louisville, uh, Rick Pitino says, maybe a bit of a bridge here. Here's one of the most talented guys, not only in the Horizon League, Dick, but in all of college basketball, Shelvin Mack. Well, Shelvin Mack should have really a breakout year this year. I mean, a dominant year. He certainly was solid last year, but now he becomes one of the real superstars of college basketball. On the other side, Peyton Siva has to really be outstanding for Louisville in their rough tempo style that they're going to utilize this season. You ready to go? You ready, ready to go? To tell you the truth, I'm a little nervous, man. It's like the first day of school, 32 <laughs> years now, but I feel so anxious. That's a good feeling to have those butterflies, baby. And you know the coaches have some butterflies as we get ready for the beginning of tonight's game. For the Butler Bulldogs, Ronald Norwich, Shelvin Mack, Sean Van Zandt in the backcourt, Garrett Butcher, and Matt Howard is up front, of course. Gordon Hayward is now with the NBA with the Utah Jazz. For the Cardinals, not one of their starters from a year ago is in the starting lineup tonight. Four are gone. One is hurt. Peyton Siva, Mike Merrick, Kyle Couric in the backcourt. Rakeem Buckles and Terrence Jennings up front. Butler picked to win the Horizon League. Rick Pitino's Louisville Cardinals picked tied for eighth, middle of the pack in the 16-team Big East to compensate for the lack of star power. They're going to use a lot of bodies to get up and down the court. Brad Stevens, what can you say? 90 wins in three years plus the first game of this year. The number five seed, Butler Bulldogs, knocking off K-State, knocking off Syracuse, knocking off Michigan State, getting all the way to the national championship game a year ago. What a run it was. John Higgins, Mike Roberts, John Gaffney are the officials, and we're underway with Louisville at home white getting the first possession. Well, you know, Rick Pitino told us he doesn't want any cheers for his club losing five starters. He said we have ten very good players. What we lack, we don't have a dominant superstar. And there's a quick foul on Garrett Butcher, who in effect is getting the starting spot right now that was occupied by Gordon Hayward. They lose a lot in Hayward, but they feel collectively they can help fill in the gaps. Well, you know, Dan, what they lose with Hayward is his versatility. He was able to do so many different things, defend, make the three, pass the ball exceptionally well, and he created a lot of spacing for the other players because he occupied so much awareness from the defense. Rick Pitino wants quick offense. They practice with a 24-second clock, an NBA clock. Mara, a deep three! They feel he can really shoot the rock no matter Providence. Maybe a coming of another young Billy D. Remember when Billy D yeah. played for Rick Pitino? They didn't expect him to be a star. He became a star shooting the three. Well, Rick Pitino says, I like him for two reasons. He's from Providence and he's Italian. That's right. He <laughs> loves to eat linguine. And a steal. Jennings. Too far for Peyton Siva as the sophomore from out of Seattle goes hurtling over the cheerleaders at the end of the court. I think you'll see a lot of turnovers, especially with their style of play. I think that is up-tempo and a fast pace, and they really don't have skilled perimeter players. Coutinho is going to use at least 10 players, wants pressure, wants them to get it over in three seconds or left or less and shoot it quickly. Will Butler be forced to speed up or will the Bulldogs be able to slow the Cardinals down? Well, they've been a master throughout the tenure, certainly of Brad Stevens, of controlling tempo. They're starting in man-to-man. -man. They play almost exclusively man-to-man, -man, as do the Cardinals. Maybe a little zone from Louisville tonight. Rakeem Buckles. Follows up his own miss and the finish. Great second effort right there by Buckles. He's the guy that had big numbers in the NCAA tournament against California. Got beat by Mike Montgomery's club, but he put 20 and 9 in the glass. Good change of direction. Goes to the left hand, stays with it. Good second effort. Gets the conversion. Sophomore out of Miami looking for a three-point play. The foul on Matt Howard, his first. That's been a problem with Howard last year. Was in foul trouble quite a bit. Yep. Told me before the game today, though, he's lost some weight. He feels a lot quicker. They got to keep him on the floor. Yep. Two years ago, he was player of the year in the Horizon League. Last year, he fouled out of nine games and was in foul trouble a lot during the NCAA tournament. His minutes were really limited. Norad the kick. 
outstanding point guard. He knows how to distribute the basketball. Butcher the miss. Nobody near the rebound for the Bulldogs. In the back come the Cardinals. Butcher's had a lot of knee problems. No call. Eight nothing. Louisville after the basket by Terrence Jennings. Jennings getting a lot of minutes this year, obviously, because Samardo Sanders went early to the NBA. Didn't get drafted, but signed a two-year deal without with the Cleveland Cavaliers. You got to thank LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James <laughs> saying bye bye, yeah. created an opportunity. Well, so they're without Samardo Samuels, Edgar Sosa, Jerry Smith, Reginald Delt, four starters. The fifth starter from last year, Jared Swapshire, has a groin injury right now, out for at least three more weeks. So none of the guys starting tonight were starters a year ago for the Cardinals. Sosa, by the way, is playing in Italy. That's right. Yeah, well, he got him that deal. Marshall, the freshman, number 23, into the game and out for Butler. Terrific looking young now. So no penetration. Butler cannot get the ball inside. Now Mack will try. The floater is good. He's so strong physically, he lost about 15 pounds. Said he's staying away from fried food. He's got a good nutritionist. We're working with him. That's no fun. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I guess we're in, a different, we're in a different situation than he's in. Buckles for three. And the rebound to Mack. Not really a great shooter when you look at Buckles. Very streaky. They need a lot of rebounding out of him. Good position inside and a hold there. Good call by Mike Roberts. Watch Shelvin Mack. Great penetration in the lane. Knows how to seal the defense off. Uses his body exceptionally well. Played at Bryan Station High School over in Lexington, Kentucky. Was not recruited by Kentucky right. or by Louisville. He's a late developer. They came out of a high school to produce Jack Givens. Remember the star? Sure. Kentucky. Melvin Turkman also came from there. Who passed away due to heart problems this summer. His son, by the way, signed to go play at Florida State. Leonard Hell. This is the first game that Mack plays in his home state in Kentucky. Subs for both teams. Zach Hahn, number three. A sharpshooter into the game for Butler. And checking in for Louisville is... Preston Knowles, who's battling a hamstring problem, why he's not starting, but he's the most experienced player they have. He's a senior. He's the captain out of Winchester, Kentucky. He can shoot the basketball, too. He's a good wing shooter. He plays ferocious defense when he's healthy. Number two, he's on Sheldon Mack right now. Well, the one thing about a Rick Pitino basketball team, they're going to play with intensity and emotion. Norad for three. And the rebound to Couric. Remember, Couric exploded for 22 second-half points in the last game at Freedom Hall last year against Syracuse. Four points per game on the season, 22 points in one half against Syracuse to close Freedom Hall. Well, he made six threes in that second half, and that certainly was a way to close Freedom Hall. As a homecoming queen, too. A king, Ralph. Right? He's king. the king, man. He's the king. <laughs> wow. I want to meet the queen, the heck with the king. <laughs> There's the king. Uh, meanwhile, Dick, Matt Howard just went to the bench with his second, second foul. foul. Yep, so that's trouble. Andrew Smith, number 44, a 6'11 sophomore out of Indianapolis, comes into the game now for the Bulldogs. They say he's improved a lot, Smith. Expect to have a lot of minutes out of him. Buckles this time knocks it down wide open on the wing. What a great start for Louisville. That's really not the kind of defense you see out of Butler. Leaving guys wide open. Nobody recognized him, found him. Hot, soft touch off the glass. About 80% of his field goal attempts are three-pointers, but that's how he put it on the floor. Well, you're right on top of it, partner. Right on top. He said sharpshooter when he came on the floor. Well, you do your homework. Man. You got that scouting report? <laughs> He's contested three here. Rattles out for Knowles. And the rebound to Smith. That kids would love to play that style of Rick Pitino. Come down, shoot the ball, yeah. shoot it quickly. Better be in shape, though, the way he wants him to run. See, they really take time. They're patient offensively, looking for the good shot. Yeah. A lot of tempo. weaves, a lot of handoffs. They really control tempo. Nearly stolen by Knowles. They It'll did. be Butler Ball when we come back. They did such a great job controlling Temple during that NCAA tournament. We'll give you a little tour of this beautiful new building, the KFC Up Center, on the other side. It's not just luxury, it's smarter than that. Now, this building was three years in the making, the KFC Yum Center, and it is a beauty. It cost $238 million, holding better than 22,000 seats. As we welcome you back to Louisville, where the Cardinals have an early lead on Butler. I was lucky enough to get a tour of this building yesterday, Dick, in uh, the beautiful open area, the rotunda as you come into the building here. 
71 private suites, not a bad seat in the house. I mean, just great views from all over the place. Two high-end bars, and then a, a beautiful round locker room for the Louisville Cardinals, the practice court that is adjacent to the main court here in the building, and of course, the Hall of Honor, celebrating the great history of this great basketball program. I tell you, a guy that deserves a lot of credit for making this happen. Kim Host of Host Communications for years, really played a vital role in putting this together. I was here for a speaking engagement, and he showed me all the plans, and wow, it's better than advertised. Yep. It's absolutely beautiful. We are downtown, uh, right on the banks of the Ohio River. Here in downtown Louisville, and uh, it is a beauty. They had the red-white scrimmage, just an intra-squad game here a few weeks ago. They put 21,000 people in the building. You think they don't love their basketball in this state? That was a 22,000 Friday when the Tennessee oh, Ladies right. came here to play the Louisville Ladies. Tough jumper goes down for Shelvin Mack, and Butler back within five. Now he's their catalyst. He's the guy that's got to put points on the board for that. It's a good Moving on, and Gordon Haywood, he becomes vital. With his own look now from Butler. A three from the wing, no good. Mack the rebound after the miss by Siva. And Mack's got to be strong for the basketball tonight. Trapped. Needs some help. Fortunate to find Nora. Beautiful feed inside. Marshall, no. And the rebound to Buckles. Buckles really has been active so far. Good rebound. And a good offensive rebound early and made a three. Jennings, good position inside. Misses the jump hook. Terrence Jennings, no more, is a, a shot blocker, a guy at the defensive end of the floor, trying to add to his offensive game. Yeah, he's limited offensively. He doesn't really have skill moves down in the post. Mack, why not? It's all Sorry. Shelvin and Mack right now for Butler. It's been a Mack show, but we sort of expected that. He played really well against the USA, all the pros, yeah. but he was there on a select college team working out against them on a regular basis. Preston Knowles with a jumper. Three's going to become big for Louisville this year. Guys like Keurig and certainly guys like Knowles got to make those threes. And again, full court pressure. Tough to simulate this when you practice against it, the kind of pressure you're going to see for the Cardinals, the way Rick Pitino wants to play this year. And he's done this before. Did it at times here. Did it at times at Kentucky. Back to Providence as well. Well, he's setting up the style for next year when he brings yeah. in some really outstanding recruits. He has described this year as a bridge year, a kind of a transition year. They had a couple of players who didn't qualify, so he doesn't quite have the team that he expected to have. In his favor is that the Big East, relatively speaking, might be a little bit down from the incredible powerhouse conference that it's been the last few years. But you know what? We've got to wait and see. Pittsburgh's great. Syracuse is going to be great. Villanova's going to be great. Villanova's going to be outstanding. Georgetown is not going to be easy yeah. with Freeman and Wright in the perimeter. Yeah. I think Marquez can be better than a lot of people believe. Mack again. Not this time. We'll see Marquette on Monday and Tuesday. The CBE Classic at Kansas City. Duke is there. Gonzaga is there. Kansas State is there. K-State picking up a big win earlier today on ESPN over Virginia Tech. Inside the lay-in for Gorgie Jane. Keep an eye on him. Number 10, 6'10 freshman out of Senegal. And Rick Pitino says, just wait till he's a junior. He's going to be quite a player. Yeah, he really believes that he has a chance to be a PTP or a prime time performer. He's got things you can't teach. He's got explosiveness, great size, and seven foot five yeah. is his wingspan. And he's fluent in four more languages than you or I. <laughs> well, I know, certainly me. I don't know about you. <laughs> Matt, off the back of the rim. Got it back, but it's out of bounds. It will be Butler ball. See, they answer the ball down inside very easily. Howard out of the lineup right now. They don't have a whole lot of size inside. Yep. Howard with two fouls. Hayward gone to the NBA. Andrew Smith is a big key for them. The 6'11 sophomore out of Indianapolis. He was a bit player last year. He could be a starter at times this year, depending on who they're playing. But even if he doesn't start, the big guy's got to give him some minutes in the middle. You know, Dan and talking to Brad Stevens, prepare, prepare for the game. The one thing they're going to find right now, they're on everybody's bulletin board, man. I mean, after last year's dramatic performance when it came so close to winning a national title, everybody's going to play at another level when they see Bucks. Pretty good looking non conference schedule for them as well. Jang with a block. There's that wingspan, Dick. Yeah, that's what they expect out of him. I think that he'll be a tremendous shot blocker eventually. Knowles feeling into the offensive end. They're not going to waste time shooting the rock, baby. That ball's going to go to the rim. Technical foul on the Butler bench, I believe. Wow. I mean, Brad Stevens is 
as, as composed yeah. and mild mannered as any coach in college basketball. I can't say for certain at the moment it was on him specifically, but the signal was made that it was on the Butler bench, and we'll have to wait for the official ruling as Preston Knowles heads to the line. Is on head coach Brad Stevens. Technical foul, so two shots coming. And I don't know if it was the the jang block at this end or at the other end, rather, or what it was that upset Brad Stevens. But I mean, he's got some fire in his eyes right now. You don't see that very often out of him. Even in the Final Four last year, he never looked like that. Well, you know, I'll tell you this right now. There were all kinds of Class A fouls, Class B technicals. That was a Class A that technical. Was a class a. That's yeah. a Class A now. Yeah. That's one A you don't want. That's one A you don't want, baby. You don't want those kind of A's. And Coach Stevens is still working over the officials. And I think we're going to get another uh, another ruling here from John Gaffney, one of the officials coming over to our table right now. The ruling right now it is a technical foul on Brad Stevens. What the officials are going to look at on the monitor is who had the ball at the time of the technical foul. Louisville's going to get two shots, but then possession reverts to whoever had the ball at the time of the technical. Remember a few years ago, if you got a technical, it was two and the ball. That rule right. is not in effect anymore. It's two and then the team that had the ball at the time of the technical gets the ball back. Except in a flagrant foul situation, obviously you get the ball. The shot was taken. And then kind of nobody had the ball. We, we can't see in the screen John Gaffney giving the technical sign at the same time as the shot was taken. So the officials are going to have to make a determination who had the ball. But Brad Stevens, I mean, he was working John Gaffney as Gaffney came down the court. Had a meeting with John Adams. He came down on a broken egg. We had some breakfast and he talked. And he said the one thing is the national supervisor, the coordinator of all officials, they're trying to create freedom of movement on the floor yeah. and consistency all over the nation. They have evaluators all over the nation now making sure that the game is called the same way in the West as it is in the East and as it is in the Midwest. Which can be tough to do sometimes because the, the officials work for different leagues and different leagues have different reputations and personalities. Uh, the Big Ten is perceived differently than the Pac-10. The Big East is perceived differently than, than the Big 12. Well, that's what they're trying to eliminate, yeah. John. They're trying to get more consistency. If you look at Rick Pitino on the right, certainly he's been 18 months of an incredible time for him, yeah. as we know about the case with Karen yeah. Cipher, where he's a victim of an extortion. She was found guilty of six felonies, now awaiting sentencing. You know, Rick obviously made a major mistake by having that one-night situation. I mean, he's admitted it, he's talked about it, and right now I can flat out tell you there are only two things in his life that matter, and that's his family and Louisville basketball. He really learned a tremendous lesson from that entire scenario. Here's another look. You can see Brad Stevens about to earn his technical now the ball is clearly in the air before the technical was called and after that nobody had possession the shot went off the rim it was out of bounds I think off Louisville off Van Trees and now John Higgins the lead official tonight is going to talk to Brad Stevens and Rick Pitino about the ruling all of this is just to see who gets the ball after the two technical free throws and I guess it'll become obvious to us after Noel shoots the free throws. You know, I don't have the stats here. and We really don't know, but I really believe that might be his first technical foul. I bet he didn't get a technical all last year. Here's the uh, here's the ruling. John, I think you're right. John Higgins said nobody had possession. It's a loose ball technical foul. They go to the possession arrow. Butler gets the ball. The arrow now switches to Louis. We learned a lot here. We learned a we, lot. We, <laughs> we wow. Officiating 101. Well, the first game, they shouldn't test us like this so early. But you know what? Thank you to John Higgins, John Gaffney, and Mike Roberts. Coming over. Coming over yeah. three different times to help give us a fighting chance of having a clue what we're talking <laughs> about, huh? <laughs> One of two for Knowles. A seven-point lead for Louisville. Butler ball. Lots well, Class A technical. We know this. You get two Class A's, you're out of the building. More pressure. Playing good defense, Louisville. They really are. They've really done a good job against the offensive sets of Butler when they try that little interchange up on top. 
Elisha Justice is into the game, a freshman. Number 22, there's the rebound for Jang, who's been an instant contributor since coming in. You know, Justice right there with the basketball. A fierce competitor who's missed the basketball in Kentucky. And a foul on Kyle Marshall, another freshman. He's out of Davie, Florida. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Thursday night, catch both semifinals from the 2K Sports Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer. A couple of great matchups at 7 o'clock Eastern. Number four, Pitt taking on Maryland. And then it's Illinois and Texas at 9 o'clock Eastern. It's on ESPN2 Thursday. Bob Knight will be with me for the first game. Dickie V will be with me for the second game. And then we'll have two more games Friday, the third place game of the championship game. We're going to see four outstanding teams at the Garden. Hey, one thing, watch out for the fighting Illini this year. Everybody's yeah. talking about certainly Michigan State, Ohio State. Bruce Weber's got a dynamite club. Everybody back. Yeah. Just about everybody back, including Dimitri McCain. A couple of good freshmen as well. Not a lot of breathing room for the Bulldogs at the offensive end. Eric Fromm is into the game for Butler, number four, another freshman. And this turnaround by Hahn. Not a lot of second opportunities for the Bulldogs either. Not getting really good shots. See, they lose that post presence inside without Howard on the floor. Nice move. Should have right to the goal. Good no call there. Knowles open for three. And skying for the rebound of Anzan. Justice called for the foul to take us to the under-12 media timeout here in Louisville. Coming up when we come back. Oh, it was a game of inches. What a run. What a heartbreaking end for the Bulldogs at the end of last season. We'll revisit. Double-A tournament, a five seed. They got all the way to the national championship game. Here they are uh, this season, early this year, losing 16-9 to Louisville. But Gordon Hayward, Avery Jukes, Willie Beasley are gone from that team, but so much is back. The whole country. Everybody loves the Cinderella. And the Final Four was right in Indianapolis. The whole country got behind that story. Well, you know, it was a great story because of the fact, as you said, right there in Indianapolis. And for them to go on and beat the likes of the Syracuse and Kansas State and Michigan State and to play at home like that against a great Duke basketball team that certainly earned the right to the national title. But let me tell you this. I think it was so dramatic. And we didn't match it. Can you imagine if that shot goes down? Wow. And a, a book out, gentlemen, uh, David Woods, you wrote the foreword to this book, a book called Underdogs, D-A-W-G-S, uh, How the Butler Bulldogs Marched Their Way to the Brink of College Basketball National Championship. Sure to be a good read for basketball fans. Yeah, it really is. David Woods is an outstanding writer. He's right in Indianapolis. He did the book. It just came out, and I really think the people will enjoy it. It's a dramatic run that they made. You talk about Cinderella. I don't think anybody projected them to be in the Final Four. Chris Smith into the game and now for Louisville. Rick Pitino keeps bringing guys in. Number five. He is a junior out of Millstone, New Jersey. He is J.R. Smith, the Denver Nuggets J.R. Smith's younger brother. You know, right now, Butler's got zero assists, zero steals, and zero block shots. And they've missed their last seven shots. And Matt Howard has been on the bench with two fouls. And they're kind of fortunate to only be down seven. Norad in some trouble. Held the ball. The arrow keeps it at this end of the floor. See, one of the real nightmares, I think, for Rick Pitino, when you really look at going into the intense Big East Conference, who did he get scoring from on a consistent basis? Where are they going to find that one guy yeah. that can provide them those kind of points? I mean, you look at Butler right now. They're going to get Shelvin Max going to put points on the board for them. In the game right now for Louisville, you've got Buckles up front. You've got Mara on the wing. Jennings is in the middle of that 2-3 zone. Chris Smith and Peyton Siva up top. First time Louisville goes on tonight. Yeah, no, Max says, I'm going to drain a three. He shot right over the top of that. He's got great touch. You think they'd like to have him maybe in a Louisville uniform or a Kentucky <laughs> uniform right now? He's got 10 of their 12 points there. Doesn't shock me. They raved about him this summer. But the people like Stephon Curry and company, they just raved about him. They said there's no doubt he will play at the next level. He's a junior. Siva way short on the turnaround. Inconsistent. That's been a problem with Siva. Came in as a big-time recruit from out of Washington. He's a kid. The state that we, of Washington. Yeah, state yeah. of Washington. He's a Seattle, McDonald's yeah. High School All-American. Yep. A lot of great players coming out of Seattle. Louisville had a great player came out of Seattle a few years ago. Terrence Williams. Terrence Williams. Really struggling, though, in the NBA. I thought he'd be a little bit better player. He's been up and down. He's with the Nets right now. And what about Beasley? He's been on fire, on fire. David Kahn deserves a lot for bringing him over from the Heat. He's doing a great job in Minnesota. So is Kevin Love. Kevin Love, 31 points and 31 rebounds in a game. That makes his game to the end right after that look bad. He had 20 points yeah. and 9 rebounds. It's midway through the first half. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, the brand-new 
KFC Yum Center, the new home of the Louisville Cardinals. And the Cardinals with a four-point lead on the Butler Bulldogs right now. Should be up, really, the way Butler has played, they should be up 10-12 at least. Yep. I think this is a positive for Brad Stevens' play that he's within four no because question. they have not played well at all. Andrew Smith hedging out a little bit too far, called for the foul, his first. They're not executing. The one thing that keeps them in the game is controlling tempo and their defensive effort. I mean, last year, I think one of the great stats that they go through the entire tournament, the only team to hit 60 or more and just barely it was enough to win a national title was Duke. Nobody was able to score 60 Incredible. on them. And we're talking quality competition. They started kind of slowly. They lost some games early. They should have won. They were 8-4 at one point. Then they won 25 in a row before losing in the national championship game to the Blue Devils. I think he's going to a little trouble out there on the horizon lane. Detroit, you watch Detroit give them some trouble. Way long on the three is Norrit. You still got some Detroit tight well, in you, don't you? Know, you know, really, when you think about it, they lost to him by one in overtime yep. at Detroit, lost him by five at Butler, and they had a lot of power. Going strong. Great post position. They had to keep McCallum, the coach's son, who's a real talent. Yes. And they got a shooter by the name of Simon. They're playing Syracuse on a road tonight. They played New Mexico on a road to open the season. Matt blocked from behind by Mara. Never saw him. Got a trail. We got to find the trail. Yeah. Good decision by Buckles. Here's a trailer. Mara for three. The Linguini man knocks it down, baby. The Linguini man. Mara likes his Linguini. A Paisan from out of Providence. How about a block at one end and a three at the other? They're on their feet here in Louisville. Switching up on top on those interchanges. See, they're switching on a little handoff. Butcher launches a three. Not close. close. And a fresh 35. It got a piece of the rim. What should I have right now? If you don't get scored out of Howard, where else can it get scored over the now? Gord's a good hand distributor, handles the ball well. Jennings the rejection. See, that's what we got to get out of Jennings and out of Jack. Block shots, good timeout. Loving the effort from the Cardinals here in Louisville. First regular season game for the men's basketball team here with the beautiful new KFC Yum Center. And the Cardinals playing well right now, up by nine. When I see people trying to sell an old Camry, it makes me want to show them a new Ford Fusion. I can't help myself. I'm kind of ready to move up and to get to the next level. Fusion. Yeah, I like it. I should probably brag about this a little bit. The projected resale value, it beats the Camry. 33 miles a gallon on the highway. Wow. The sync system. GPS. Correct. Phone. Yes. I love it. Get our best deals, 0% financing. And as a holiday bonus, we'll give you $1,500 toward your first three payments. Holly has something she'd like to say. Hi, Camry. For years, I was just a brewer. Till one of the guys brought in some fresh bread that he made from our pale ale. And from that first bite, I knew my business would never be the same. When businesses see an opportunity to grow, the Hartford is there, protecting their property and helping them plan their employees' retirement. Here are bread. See how the Hartford helps businesses at AchieveWhat'sAhead.com. TV, you can start watching in one room. Pause. And a nine point lead of the Butler Bulldogs, 7.59 to go in the first half. Hour number 21 of the College Hoops tip off marathon. Uh, it started at midnight Eastern time this morning with a Memphis win over Miami. Some news and notes from the marathon so far. The UConn women beat Baylor by one point. 65-64 to extend their winning streak to 80 games. Kansas State pulling away late from Virginia Tech. How about the performance Ohio State put on down in game for the night, beating Florida. Jared Sullinger with a monster game, the freshman. I'll tell you what a diaper dandy he is. I know everybody's talking about Harrison Barnes, and rightfully so, but you better include the name Sullinger right up there. Ohio State and Thad Manu, by the way, he was on the 
head of the guy program here at Butler, and that's, that's right. when he was in a, got the job as a full-time administrative assistant, Brad Stevens. Hey, you want to talk about a marathon, the outstanding basketball writer for ESPN.com, Dana O'Neill. Yeah, she's staying up all night. She was at the Memphis game at midnight. Absolutely, she's then, here. Then she drove to Carbondale for the 10 a.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. local start in uh, the Southern Illinois game, which went into overtime. Slept for two hours and then drove here to wow. Louisville to do the game I know. Tonight. <laughs> I got a big hug from her before the game. <laughs> Three games. Driving all over the country. She loves her hoops. Yep. Smith. Got it back. Yeah. Yep. No, it's a held ball. And held ball is the call, and the arrow gives it to the Cardinals. And, again, they're struggling without Matt Howard in the game. Well, they can't get any post scoring at yeah. all. Howard, two years ago, was a dominant force. Really struggled a little bit last year. Hey, we took about the marathon. We took about basketball early. We've had so many shocks around. Stetson beating Wake Forest. We had North Carolina Nashville over Auburn. Appalachian State over Tulsa. Kennesaw State blows out Georgia Tech. That's right. I mean, South Dakota State beats Iowa. Unbelievable. You always get a few of them this time of year. Remember the Gardner Webb Kentucky yeah. game a couple of years ago? Remember Syracuse losing that Absolutely. exhibition game to LeMoy and everybody going crazy? There's Matt Howard. Two early fouls. We haven't seen him in a long time, but as Dick mentioned, without him in there, they have no offense other than Shelvin and Mack. Mack has 10 points. The rest of the Butler Bulldogs have two. Well, at least when you got him on the floor, you have a little inside outside game. You got perimeter play and you got play on down in the post. That's why I'm really shocked how good Kansas. I've underrated Kansas because I think anytime you lose, people like they lost. You lose point guard play out of Collins. Yeah. You lose the wing play out of Henry, and you lose the post play out of Aldridge. Yeah. You take geographically on a court, three major areas of the floor away. Yet they look impressive early. Kansas, really impressive. Kansas State looked great today. In the Whatever Virginia Tech, boy, they play hard and physical. They're gonna, it's gonna be a great battle atop the Big 12. Well, if Kansas gets, for example, Selby, who's yeah. a terrific talent eligible, I mean, that elevates them to me in the yeah. top 10. Missouri, Mike Anderson is a very good team, and don't count out Texas. Texas. They, they, they've got a different mix than they had a year ago, but they're gonna be a major factor in that Big 12. His buckles hanging around the basket. You know, Texas got some good young kids. Their problem last year, 17 to zip, and they ended up no chemistry. You left a word out there. They got some good young Canadian kids. Oh, Canadian yes. kids. Oh. <laughs> Joseph and Thompson. Yes, you're right. Corey We're going to see those kids in New York in a couple of days. They're going to have a tough challenge with Illinois. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Thursday night, catch two quarterfinal games with the Honda Puerto Rico tip-off. First at 5 Eastern on ESPN2. It's Hofstra taking on number 8 North Carolina. But it's 7.30 Eastern time, Western Kentucky and Minnesota. The Honda Puerto Rico tip-off on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com Thursday. I'll hit you with a score. I was shocked with Western Kentucky. Ken McDonald's done a heck of a job. Their former assistant in Texas. They beat St. Joe's of Philadelphia. Who's a the St. Kennedy? Joe's? Yeah, yeah. the St. Joe's yeah. at in Philadelphia by 28. Wow. 98 70. Unless I saw wow. the wrong score. I looked three times. I could not believe that score on the road. Freshman Krishan Hopkins, uh, who was in the game just for a minute or so, back to the bench now for Butler. Sean Van Zandt back into the game. Mac back at the line. It's back or nothing at all right now for the Bulldogs. They're just hoping to get into halftime reasonably close, get Howard back for the second half, and try to regroup. And the three for Elisha Justice. Matt Stevens told me before the game, he was concerned about him. He said he has the ability to come in and knock down two or three threes. He's a very tough kid mentally. Biggest lead of the game for the Cardinals. That's what that three-point shot would do for you. It's one of the unknowns about this Louisville team. How good of a shooting team will they be, or will they get most of theirs in transition on turnovers, that sort of thing? Matt. Bulldogs with a rare chance on the offensive glass, but they can't corral it. Justice Bay shot fake. Mara's open on the wing. And Mara gets a gift and is fouled. Norad committing the foul. I don't see the intensity and the kind of passion that you would expect out of Butler. You really don't see that right now. It seems almost like they're really stepping back rather than attacking. And Brad Stevens feeling maybe this is danger time, maybe slipping away a little bit. Even with two fouls, he's going to bring Matt Howard back into the game. He sat 11 minutes in this game since picking up number two. I think it's a smart move right there. I mean, really, you've got to do something offensively, try to get some points on the board. 
Hey, Brad Stevens brought something over to us, and you know we mentioned we're doing the, the coaches versus cancer tournament. We got the Jimmy V coming up uh, in December. Uh, there's a huge fan of Butler basketball named Aiden Brown, a five-year-old who has been battling cancer. Just had his last chemo session this week. The family theme has been be bulldog tough. So to to Aiden Brown, who's sitting at home with uh, mom and dad, Michelle and Chris, big brother Alex. We wish you all the best from the Bulldog family and from the ESPN family. Well, Aiden, I would simply tell you, just think positive, really have faith, and we really got a lot of people in your corner. I want to sing the same praises out there, youngster in Sarasota, battling brain cancer, Kyle Peters. That's why we're trying to raise a million dollars with our gala for pediatric cancer. We're proud to say that Reese Davis and also Jay Bullis will come along nice. with us and introduce, introduce our celebrities that are going to be there. This is, are you talking in May? In May 20th, right, right. and Good. John Saunders will be our right. MC and host once again. We're looking forward to the Jimmy V in New York, early December, Memphis, Kansas, Syracuse, Michigan State. Great doubleheader on ESPN from the Garden in New York. Yeah, Memphis had a tough game there with Miami. Be able to pull that game out. Duran Scott's going to have a big year. I think there's certain Souths that are going to break out years. I think you're going to see one with Texas and Jordan Hamilton. Put up some big numbers yeah, in their last game. Howard goes back to the bench as Butler goes on defense now. So Brad Stevens is going to rotate the big guys, play a little offense defense with Howard and Smith. He must not have done the job when he was there. I thought mean, he was thinking about basketball strategy when he was there. Because where's he getting all these strategic moves? Had a trailer, but nobody called for the ball. He kind of communicate. Boy, they had numbers. They had what looked like a layup, and they couldn't get anything going. And Louisville recovers. And to listen to the crowd, appreciate that. There's no communication on that transition game. Look at the strength. Shelvin Mack right to the rack. Nobody can check him on the floor. It's an Eminem or a mismatch. Nobody can handle him. 15 of the 19 points for Shelvin Mack. He's home, baby. He's in the state of Kentucky. Jennings, nice turnaround mid-range jumper. That's a big plus. Any kind of offense they get out of here down in the post is a positive. Norred slows it down a little bit. Brad Stevens calling out a play from the bench. Norred's not a scorer. He's a distributor. He's a guy that tries to create offense for them, get them good shots. Good job. Solid defense being played. Other than that, Max is too good for anybody on the floor. They play off Norred, and he misses the three badly. That will allow him to shoot that perimeter shot. Buckles thought about it. He's already made one three tonight, as has Mara. Jennings the rebound. Size really hurt now against. Under four to go in the first half. Louisville by ten. Nice split there by Justice. The slam for Jennings. Okay, I like Justice. I think he has a good basketball feel for the game. Made a good penetration move. Dumped it off for the slam jam bam. Kyle Couric called for the foul. And a timeout on the floor. Rick Pitino's got to be pleased. Got to be pleased. There's the penetration. There's the little dump ball. And there's Jam City at Pitino's Palace. Two holders of lower level club seats. There you go. You go have a little drink. You go relax. And you climb up a few stairs back to your good seats. Where the fancy folks sit watching the game. You know what's something going on me? You got the KFC Yum Center. Yeah. You got Papa John's <laughs> Football Stadium. Yeah. I know one thing, man. She getting the pizza business. <laughs> As pizza's working, baby. That's Mike Illich out there. That's right. He owns the Tigers, the Red Wings, and now the Pistons. Hot pizza business. That's what we should go in, Dennis, to the broadcasting. <laughs> pizza, baby, pizza. This place is all right. I mean, we, we get to go oh. to a lot of and Freedom Hall. I mean, Freedom Hall was a, a historic building for what, 55, 56? years hosted final fours and all kinds of things but uh, I mean they really they did it right and, and officials here they went to Conseco and they went to all a lot of the new buildings around the Midwest and looked to, to take the best out of everything and put it in this building Preston Knowles with a three-pointer largest lead of the night for the Cardinals he wanted a foul on the play yeah. as well hey I would suggest that people get Billy Reed's Coffee table book, the KFC Yum Center. What a beautiful coffee table book this is. It's all about the Yum Center and how it was put together. And it's really first class. Knowles limping a little bit. We mentioned earlier he's got a bruised thigh. That's why he didn't start, and he might have aggravated the injury after taking that shot. 
on the three-pointer. Hey, ESPN is your NBA destination for Wednesday night's doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, it's Steve Nash and the Suns taking on the Miami Heat. Then at 9.30, it'll be the Chicago Bulls and the San Antonio Spurs. Our buddy Mark Jackson will be broadcasting that San Antonio game. And our buddy Mark Jackson's son, Mark Jackson the second, is a member of the Louisville basketball program. He's there a he freshman is. right here. Uh, a guard, uh, a redshirt candidate, might not play this year. They might uh, hold him out and let him mature a little bit, let him get stronger, get quicker. But a nice young man had a great talk with him before the game. And I know uh, Big Mark, <laughs> older Mark, is awfully proud of his son. And, of course, uh, Mark Jackson played for Rick Pitino. Yeah, Rick Pitino is one yeah. of his favorite players he ever coached. He says Mark Jackson yeah. loved coaching Mark. So I'm not shocked at all that Mark son would come here. Matt Howard. Doesn't get the bounce on the three. Brad Stevens took the time out to get Howard back in there on offense. Now he's got to run the risk of him out there with two fouls on defense. Jennings, no. Follow, no, by Van Trees. And a foul against Howard, his wow. third. Number three on Howard. He can't believe it. I think it was a bad call right there. Bad call. I mean, I really I don't blame Brad Stevens being upset with that one. I mean, really, where do you see this call for the third foul here? I mean, you can call these all day long inside going for the ball. Actually, if anything, Van Trees threw Howard out of the way. Really a bad call. And that call could really, really hurt big time. Sophomore out of Indianapolis, Steven Van Trees, 6'9", 235. Howard's got to come out again. You know, Rick Pitino knows before the game, Van Trees is going to be a really a guy that's going to give him some good minutes, quality minutes this year. He said he loves coaching his team. He said really play hard. We don't have any limitations in terms of their effort and energy. Rebound to Norrit after the missed three by Knowles. 14-point lead for the Cardinals. They have led throughout. Somehow, someway, there's no way they're going to finish eighth in the Big East. He will fight them up. Rick Pitino is magical with these kind of situations. He loves almost being that underdog. Nobody's expecting anything. And he finds a way to motivate, inspire. He has been so dedicated to this team. Look at him on that side. He loves teaching. Loves getting in the gym. One thing they have is a relatively easy non-conference schedule. They only leave this building once out of conference and they don't even leave the state they go to, to western kentucky they don't leave the state of kentucky until january the 9th well he learned you gotta understand something for two years he served as an assistant yeah. for who for the fifth and biggest coach in college basketball james Beheim, and he learned the art of scheduling thou shall not leave home if teams want to come to play us here we will play up at home gotta pay for this new building right <laughs> <laughs> So they figure to get some confidence and uh, pile up some wins. They do play Kentucky. They do play Vegas. Kentucky, do they play basketball down here? Where's that? Kentucky's about 67 miles from here. Go down to 64 East. And they play a little hoops there in Lexington. A Butler turnover. Turnover's low here, considering we played 17 and a half minutes. Butler has been out of sight. They've been out of single offensively, rebounded. Defending this is not the Butler team that we witnessed last year making that run as they did for the national title And again replacing three players including their best player last year Gordon Hayward ninth overall pick by the Utah Jazz Mara And here comes Van Zandt You know when you look for example you think about Matt the team at one time about a minute ago was one for 15 and he was five for ten and the rest of the club was one for 50. Well, the, the rest of the team has only four points. He's got 17. Zach Hahn's got two. Matt Howard's got two. That's it. And that's the story of the game. I'll tell you this, though. Rick Pitino is so excited about next year. He is coming in a terrific recruiting class rated by our people and certainly the top 10, Paul B. and Cardi and ESPNU do a great job evaluating Wayne Blackshear, Shane Behannon, Zach Price, Ryan Taylor, Pretty was that. Knowles the steal. Van Trace the slam. Well, Van Trace showing why Rick Pitino was talking about him in such a positive way. They got Pitino's palace a little rocking right now. I have one question. How long before they build Calipari's castle? <laughs> they get a little envious down there in Lexington. And if you have, we can do better. Andrew Smith lays it in. A rare basket by somebody other than Shelvin Mack. And Rick Pitino wants a timeout. 
will step aside all Louisville here in their regular season opener for their brand new building. No. Back here at Louisville, the Cardinals are, are playing a lot of guys. They're playing fast, and they're playing some terrific defense. Yeah, they really are doing a great defensive effort, and they're using that defense to convert on the offensive end. There's a little jam inside. Nice pass, bounce pass. Ventrice with the score. Knowles really looking for his offense here tonight. Eight points now for Knowles. He says he's really worked hard on learning how to beat people off the bounce as well as shoot the open three. There's that pressure. The relentless keeps coming after you and after you. Keeps rotating bodies. Everybody fresh because he's playing 10 or 11 guys. On inside. In and out. Smith left hand. Jennings the rebound. We go into the final minute of the first half. Got to show some patience right here. You want to get a good shot? Jennings. Not this time. And back the rebound. And Butler turns it over again. And now Louisville can hold it. I don't know if they will. Well, they rushed it. They had 35 seconds, and Rick Pitino was screaming at Chris Smith. I said one shot. So I don't think they have any awareness to what the shot clock yep. is. Now Butler will hold it. Trying to get a little one-on-one -on -one for Matt. Trying to isolate him. Instead of screen for him up on top. And the three, no good. What a first half for Louisville. Solid defensive effort by Louisville. Made some threes. And here it is. Butler really struggling. 23 for the half. Ouch. 41 for Louisville. Solid performance by Louisville in the first half. A much bigger deficit than the Bulldogs were under at halftime of any game all of the last season. An 18-point lead for the Cardinals as we send it back to the studio for the UPS halftime report with Carl Ravitch and the guys. <laughs> Dan Dick, thank you very much. lead over the Butler Bulldogs. Dan Schoen and Vic Vitale, welcome back. Glad you're with us. What did you think of the Cardinals in the well, first half? Well, I thought the Cardinals really played well. They got four guys with eight points to basically get some balance. They're a balanced team offensively. On the other side, it's all been Shelvin Mack and a very poor, ineffective performance by Butler. We expected so much more out of this Butler basketball team. But it really shows. You look at the numbers right there. 17 for Shelvin Mack and the rest of the team. Struggle City. But it shows how much they miss Gordon Hayward. His versatility, Dan, was so vital to this club. I mean, this club really struggling offensively. That's going to be a held ball as it gets pinned between the rim and the backboard, and the arrow gives it to Louisville. They don't look like a legitimate top 20 basketball team, never mind top 10 team. What a play there by Raheem Buckles to begin the second half. Andrew Smith starting the second half for Butler instead of Garrett Butcher. Matt Howard, he was a big story in the first half as well because of the foul trouble. Played only four minutes, picked up three fouls, had only two points, no rebounds. They need him on the court. Peyton Siva showing a burst. Wow, just a simple little entry to the post. A cut without the ball. You didn't see that last year. Butler was so good defensively. Those things just didn't happen. They are not playing with that cohesiveness and that passion and the communication that's vital on the floor. Well, Hayward, a good scorer and a good versatile defender. Willie Beasley, a terrific defender. Avery Jukes, a forward off the bench. They've lost three key players. Now, a lot of teams, obviously, a lot of teams lose players. It's going to take them a while to get going. And they've got a tough non-conference schedule, including a game against Duke in Newark coming up in early December. They will also add some other tough games to the schedule. They want to go out and play people to find out how good they are to kind of raise their profile. You know, Duke today was up 71-29 on Miami, Ohio. Wow. On one time. Jennings inside. Too easy, but Howard's playing with three fouls. It's amazing how easy Louisville's getting open looks because the one thing last year was the terrific defense, the help, the communication that Butler had. I talked about it earlier. They didn't allow during the tournament 
teams to score 60 points with the yeah. exception of two in the championship game. Off balance shot goes for Mack. It's all Mack. Everybody else should stay on the sideline. <laughs> Get out the camera. Kodak, Kodak time, baby. Kodak time. Let's shoot Mr. Mack. But one against five is a tough way to win a basketball game. And the Butler is down 20. This is a larger deficit than they faced at any point in any game last year. They're going to get everybody's best shot. I mean, you go and look at the ball at the board inside of Louisville, you can guarantee there's all kinds of clippings about their run last year. A traveling violation turns it back over to Louisville. As mentioned, the Butler never trailed uh, by 20. At any point in any game last year, this is a larger halftime deficit, a larger overall deficit than they faced at any point last season. Brad Stevens said, ironically, they're actually getting less attention now, he thinks, than they got last year. They were ranked 10th in the nation to begin last year. They're ranked 18th right now. He says life really hasn't changed inside the program or in his family and personal life. It's kind of business as usual right now. I'll tell you one thing's changed in bank account. <laughs> Howard doesn't get the bounce, draws the foul. Yeah, a 12-year extension, that's pretty good security. Have pretty good numbers, too. Yeah. <laughs> Have pretty good numbers. A lot more than when he came in as a volunteer assistant out of Eli Lilly. He's a sharp guy. He's a guy that has yeah. great understanding, good about people. He came to our gala last year and was such a hit with everybody there. Very personable. And you know what? At any point during the NCAA tournament, whether they were up or down, it was early or late, it was very tough to tell what the score was, what was going on. When we saw him get the technical in the first half tonight, that's the most emotion I think either one of us has ever seen from him. Well, I told you, at halftime, I did a little research. He only had one other technical so far in his career, early in his career, and now this one here tonight. He has that disposition. Pete Sanders, you know the tennis guy, sure. yeah. had that same disposition when he played tennis. You never knew if he was winning, losing. You have that disposition. <laughs> Count the basket. Siva shaken up. It appears to be okay, and a foul to boot. See the real dilemma here for Brad Stevens. He doesn't have a club that's going to go out and trap and press. Ooh, ooh, come down to ball hard. He just doesn't have that kind of club that's going to go out and pressure. Andrew Smith with the hard foul, his second. And I look to say, well, shoot the threes, but where are they going to get the threes from? Who's going to knock them down? Haywood was certainly a guy to do it. We're talking about Beasley was very valuable to them defensively. Smith goes to the bench. Chase DeGaul, a 6'4 sophomore out of Newcastle, Indiana, is coming to the game for the first time for the Bulldogs. Three point play, Siva, and the lead continues to grow for Louisville. back in the game for Butler as well. It's 23. Well, you know, clubs are going to really just work on containing, trying to control back as much as possible. If you do that, you got a chance against them. Will miss the three. Rebound Siva. And just too many bodies. Somehow gets the ball back. And eventually a held ball. It will be Butler ball. Eight years in a row, Rick Pitino's won 20 or more games. A lot of people thought this year's club it's not going to happen, but I'm telling you, I think they're going to do that. I don't think they're sort of going to have a great, great year, but I think they're going to have a good, solid year. They're going to beat some people that you don't expect them to beat, and they're going to get beat by people that you say, wow, how did they get beat there? But hey, if you're down years, 20 wins and sneak into the tournament, that's, that's pretty good down year. A lot of big-time programs had worse years than that last year. Well, I think things are really on an upward tip. A lot of people thought because of the trial and all the notoriety over that case in terms of the extortion case, it would hurt recruiting. It hasn't hurt recruiting at all. He's been dedicated. He's got a terrific class coming in next year. Pittsburgh, the preseason pick to win the Big East. They're ranked fourth in the country right now. We'll see them Thursday and Friday night on ESPN2 from the 2K Sports Coaches versus Kansas Classic from New York City. Jamie Dixon has almost everybody back from last year. Brad Wanamaker actually gives off the great starts this year. Well, it's a solid backcourt. You and Morris have a game. But they really were taken right to the wire by Rhode Island. Yeah. Rhode Island well, made 14 threes in that game, and Jimmy Barron's one of the better coaches out there that gets no publicity. Look at you watching our game down there I in Sarasota. Huh? I was jealous, man, because it was kind of close. Why am I not doing that game? I mean, Dar's moving me right out of the lineup. <laughs> Zach Hahn into the game now for Butler. Mac will sit down. We've got a, a media timeout of the under 16 break, the next whistle under 16, so Mac can get a pretty good breather and not miss a whole lot of game time. 
What is ESPN? That 1,200 games? 1,200 games on the family of networks this college basketball season. Sivo with another layup. They're scoring too easily. I really, I was so impressed and enamored with the defensive effort of Butler last year. And I see no semblance of that at all. Now, we could talk about losing Hayward, but they lost five starters, Louisville, too. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody, like you said, loses some players. Look, look at the pressure and the intensity from the Cardinals. And again, because Rick Pitino's using so many guys, nobody's getting tired. You better play well or you're going to the bench. You're exactly right, guys. That's a great point you just made. He knows right now with his personnel that he's going to rotate bodies. And they know if you want some PT play of time, yeah. you better play hard. Norad draws the foul on his way to the basket. And that will take us to the under-16 timeout here with the brand-new KFC Yum Center. So many things to do, so many places to go, including the Burnett's V Lounge. Not V for Vital, V for Vodka. Here at Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan State and Duke game. But you look at South Carolina, they're not going to be an easy cupcake. I'll tell you, they lost certainly Danny, but they got some good players. They got Lakeem Jackson. They're going to get Modro, Sam from last year, a transfer coming in from Nevada who should really help them by the name of Cook, Malik Cook. So Darren Warren knows a little bit about how to win. Unfortunately for him, he's got a tough situation to coach off. I think there's a dilemma right now with Bob. Could it be? And I only ask you this, Dan Schumann, you read a lot of those clippings. You see a lot of the videotapes. You hear all the praise. I'm not saying Brad Stevens because he's not that way, but the kids are human. They're human beings. It's only human that you hear about how great and how great and how great on the campus. And you come out here today, and maybe this is a lesson for them, big time, that we got to go back to doing the things that Butler basketball is about because this is not Butler basketball. Defensively, offensively, executing, there's no efficiency. It has really been a great deep performance at best. Well, another reason to play a tough non-conference schedule, you find out, instead of, instead of playing cupcakes, as you say, you find out not only if you're good, you find out what you need to work on. And, and exactly. Brad Stevens, uh, they got to go back to the drawing board. Defensively, as you say, there's just not been Butler basketball. They have really struggled with the pressure. And Louisville times has scored easily. And also offensively, they usually execute so well, so efficient, take the extra pass, the speed roll. Bullet inside for Jang, but he's called for the travel. Let's check out the Butler's key non-conference game. So look at the road ahead, brought to you by the Hartford. We mentioned the game uh, in Newark against Duke coming up on the 4th of December. They go to Xavier. They play Stanford and also Utah and Florida State out of the Diamond Head Classic over the holidays. Well, you want to see a schedule. Take a look at Mark Hughes, Gonzaga's yeah. schedule. Wow. But you know what? You can do that because they got enough wins within their conference. St. Mary's going to be good again. They gave Steve Lavin, our colleague, his first game of Big L. They played a you know, fairly tough St. John's, a tough game yep. on the road. I think they're going to get in the tournament this year. I really do. I think St. John's will be a tournament team. He's energized the city. He's got people excited about basketball. He's got a lot of seniors, too. And he's got great class coming in next year. Mike Mara on the feed from Rakeem Buckles after the three at the other end by Chase Degas. Just amazing me how easy it is the way they're scoring. Brad Stevens unhappy with the defense again. He'll use another timeout. Patino's Palace and Rick Patino put some people in this building <laughs> because of the great coaching job that he does. Well, he's done a great coaching job everywhere he's been. I firmly believe Rick Patino belongs in the National Basketball Hall of Fame. The only coach to take three schools to a Final Four, a national championship. He's done an amazing job on a collegiate level, and he is really deserving of being honored at the highest honor of being a Basketball Hall of Fame. Just a matter of time. Just a matter yeah. of time. Just a matter of time. Hey, you're a baseball expert. My guy David Price got a shot to win the uh, he got a shot. Cy Young tomorrow. Norad, and he draws the foul on Mara. I don't want to get in debate with you. I know it's a blowout. I know you love baseball, but I don't want to hear about Hernandez, okay? I don't want to hear about his stats and all the numbers. The bottom line is the guy's not even a 500 pitcher. Yes, he is. No, oh, he's 500 even? 13 and 12. Yeah. 13 and 12. Yeah. Well, I don't think 13 and 12 warrants. I don't care about numbers, all that jazz. He doesn't win enough. He's he got to win enough because he played on a lousy team. Oh, but so what? You got to go out and win some games. 
I really believe that David Price took his team and plus what about Sabathia? Sabathia, yeah, the Yankees provide so much offensive firepower. Price had to win for them to have a chance to win the division. Where's and they won a tough, tough division. Where's Carl Crawford now? Carl Crawford, Tommy Angels. I'm going to cry. I'm with you. I'm a little biased. I know. I'm not one price. I'm a little biased. <laughs> I admit it. I admit it. A little Plus, run here for Butler, but they've still got a lot of work to do in this game. Knowles, the turnaround. The one thing about Louisville, they'll not allow you to get possessions because they're going to shoot the ball so quickly. So that it gives you a chance. They're going to take the time off that clock. Stigall inside. Couldn't convert on the reverse. Gonna play with a little urgency here. Matt Howard just about picked up his fourth on the reach there. Buckle. Settling for a lot of threes for the big guy. See, Brad wants him to pick up the tempo a little bit. And certainly the one thing is don't be possessions on the floor. For Ball on a post play inside. Mike Roberts with the ball. Is the officials doing a solid job here? I question the one call, the one that was made on Howard, on Howard for the yeah. third foul. Jang picks up the foul. He'll head to the bench. Terrence Jennings is back in. Kyle Couric is back in for Mike Mara. I don't even like to hear the name Kentucky here, but we'll talk a little bit about Kentucky since they're right down the road. What a nice duo they have, the Diaper Dandies, and Brandon Knight and Terrence Jones. On. They're praying and hoping for a miracle at the end say they would appeal that case and get Edis cancer. cancer yeah. Oh, that takes him to another level with him. Good position by Jennings. Misses the turnaround. Offensive rebound. Buckles has it taken away. Always got to find a way to make some threes here. A travel. Norad got the ball caught on his hip. They're totally out of sync because that's not their style of play. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Thursday night, catch both semifinals for the 2K Sports Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer. It begins at 7 Eastern, number four, Pittsburgh and Maryland. And then at 9 Eastern, it'll be Illinois taking on Texas. The 2K Sports Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer on ESPN 2 Thursday. You know, Dan, I mentioned earlier about some Souths. I think you're going to have super breakout years. One is down in Maryland, Jordan Williams. I think he's going to become a big time yes, he, he was good last year, but I think he's ready to become a genuine star on the national level. They got a freshman too, Keyshawn Howard, who looks terrific. Terrence Jennings with a slam. He gets the slam and a little dump inside, a bounce pass. Good two-man game, good execution, good ball movement. Take a look at this right here. Nice little dump. There's the jam. They're going to be a lot better too when they get swapped. Uh, swap higher back. Swap, swap shire. Yeah. Swap shire. Got a groin injury now. Yeah. Louisville Dick with 16 assists on 21 made baskets tonight. Sharing the basketball, whereas Butler, they've only got three assists in the game. They've only got 10 field goals, but only three assists. They don't see much ball movement. They seem very stagnant. They just seem to be really having trouble handling the pressure that Louisville is putting on on every possession. Another turnover and a foul. Good call with you right there, buddy. And Schumann right on top of the action. <laughs> Norad frustrated. I really thought we were going to see a nail biter here. It shows you what I know. I thought this was going to be a real tough, tenacious game. A lot of my friends, they were saying, are you kidding me? Louisville doesn't have a chance against Butler. They don't have a chance the way they execute and the way they defend. Oh, really? I want my buddies. I'm not going to call their names out. I want them to look at the score right now, and they better not tell me any more about the game of basketball, okay? All you my buddies that are listening right now that called me and told me that they didn't have a chance, I don't want to hear you talk basketball. You need new buddies. <laughs> Seba. Nice catch by Buckles. And he lost it. The freshman Krishan Hopkins with the ball, a guy that Brad Stevens is very high on. Great speed, great agility. Keeps that good handle too. Yep. Hopkins right there, wide open. Short on the three. That is Alex Anglin, a walk-on number 11, getting some time right now for the Bulldogs. Brad Stevens says, why not? Some of the other guys aren't playing well enough to deserve being in there. This has to be one of their poorest performances, I would say, during the Brad Stevens yeah. tenure. I mean, they've had performance where they've been beaten. But this one here, I think they've been embarrassing. This Coming is, here, rated as they were. This is a lineup you could never imagine Brad Stevens putting out there on the court. But he's just desperately searching for a combination of the world. They're giving up a lot of size right now. they got four guards in the game. 
Van Zandt called for the foul. It's a 20 point lead for Louisville. The fans enjoying the game and the amenities here with the brand new KFC Yum Center, the new home of the Cardinals. All right, Carl, looking forward to that. Back here at Louisville with Dick Vitale. I'm Dan Schulman, the Butler Bulldogs, and the Louisville Cardinals, and all cards. A, a great team effort, very strong defense, balance from the Cardinals, and a 20 point lead. Absolutely effective, really moving the basketball, sharing it. I should have called Carl up and asked him if he thought Price could win. Carl knows him with baseball tonight. We'll find out tomorrow. Roy Halliday winning the national Well, that was a lot. Yeah, that was a lot. Chris Smith to the line and now for the Cardinals junior out of Boston New Jersey we mentioned the younger brother of J.R. Smith of the Denver Nuggets he's an explosive player you talk about J.R. Smith he's been a little bit of enigma though as a yeah, player a little inconsistent I mean, a little inconsistent yeah. he can shoot you back into the game he can shoot you right out of the game but he's a talent one of two for his little brother well about Miami not enough size down here they can have all those scores they want you talk about winning the ring they got to get a little size they got to defend people when they play them you can say the Lakers be no shot and they're part of the uh, ESPN NBA doubleheader on a Wednesday night. First game as they host the Phoenix Suns. Hopkins handling right now. Eric Fromm back into the game at number four for Butler. Wide open underneath. Matt Howard on the feed from Sean Van Zandt. They had a little bit more ball movement there, a little more spark to their movement as players. First field goal of the night for Howard. Well, he got foul trouble so early. Jennings having a good night. Well, these kids were vital factors in helping them go to that final game. So you know they got a sense of pride about yep. themselves. So they, they know they're being humiliated out here. You better believe they're going to take it out on some other people. Their next game is with Ball State. And reaching foul, I think, on Curry. Howard's possession was really created by some real good ball movement. He slid inside. Lack of communication by Louisville. They don't find him. He gets the lift. They say it was so dramatic at Hingle Fieldhouse when they hung the bing and the radio calls were played of the different radio calls and their wins. Yeah. Oh, they said it was really unbelievable as they put that banner up, national finalists. I mean, it was an incredible story. E oh, even, even in your wildest dreams, even if you're a... You know, within the program, Coach Brad Stevens and the players, you always think you can go out and win every game. But to accomplish what they accomplished last year, here's the banner being unfurled, as you talked about on Saturday, just prior to the opener of their season tip-off against Marion. Everybody clapped in yeah. unison like they did in the movie Hoosiers, right. which took place the scene at Hinkle. But you know what they've said, and a lot of teams say that. Now we move on, right? That was last year. They're not defending anything. They're pursuing something this year. Well, you're listening a lot to Coach K. You're watching Access, the Duke team, because oh, he access. talks about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he talks about that. We're not defending anything. Wow, Coach K's got a guy listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they, they are, flat out loaded. People get on my case. Are you going to talk about the Dukies? Yes, I'm going to talk about the Dukies. Why? Because they are America's premier team. As I said up Mike and Mike this morning, those guys do a terrific job, and Mike brought it up to me. Hey, how good are they? If this was the NBA, the college season, no one beats Duke four out of seven. But there are a number of teams that can beat them in a one-game shot. Who's the second best team in America, in your opinion? Well, you got to say Michigan State right now. I would simply say Michigan State. I think Gonzaga's going to be better. People think, I know everybody's talking about a Duke possible Kansas State matchup up there in Kansas City. But they got a tough one, Kansas State. They better not be thinking about Duke right. playing the Zags, who, by the way, have a tough one tonight with San Diego State, who could be one of those real sleeper team and by the way they're crawling back it's down to 15 it was 15. up in the 20s for a while and there's still better than 10 minutes left in this game the crowd has gotten quiet too everybody seems to be silent in here they smell the w yeah. and rick patino's getting a little bit anxious out there because the lack of execution is starting now to go to the louisville side a lot of fouls and has had two six now on butler eight on louisville a cardinal turnover Hopkins. That's pass. Offensive foul. No basket. Brad Stevens living. That was a good ball, though. He was flying up in the air. You're not going to get away with that. You're not going to get away with it. You're leaving your feet. He's outside that so-called park they talk about. He's not even close to that. 
No foul. Oh, looked like he tried to avoid the contact there with Siva. Tried to slide around him, but kind of collided with his shoulder. It's the toughest call in the sport. Block shot. Oh, it's a tough call. We have a tough time calling even a second chance. I can get over a quiet this year. And another whistle. And a kickball. Louisville keeps it. 55 to 40. The Cardinals, this is their season opener. Butler won its first game over Marion, an NAIA team, won it easily on Saturday by 29. And who plays for Marion? It's Tom Nicolaitis' son, the former coach. He had a lot of success here, but he went out to Iowa, struggled big time, yeah. obviously, out of Iowa, lost his job. I think sometimes guys don't realize how fortunate they are where they're at. And sometimes you allow money to dictate. So Jimmy Valvano said it the best. Never mess with happiness. Yeah, maybe Brad Stevens was thinking about that when he when he signed that 12-year extension, and now they're tending to the right leg of Sheldon Mack, who's been by far the best player in the game for the Bulldogs today. He's the best talent on the floor today. Knowles, wide left. Really sloppy now. Louisville really getting out of sync. Maybe cramps the way they're uh, working on both legs right now for Mack. I'm not a doctor, Mr. Schumann, so I'll let you utilize your <laughs> intellectual medical. <laughs> That's about as much as I got. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Thursday night, catch two quarterfinal games from the Honda Puerto Rico tip-off. First at 5 Eastern on ESPN2 is Hofstra taking on Tyler Zeller in North Carolina. And then at 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN3.com, Western Kentucky against Minnesota. The Honda Puerto Rico tip-off on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com Thursday. Tell you mentioned Zeller. Oh, an exciting guy in Bloomington, Indiana. Cody Zeller said yes to Tom Green, and that just elevated his recruiting class to a top 10 class without a doubt. You said it last year. People better beat up on Indiana while they have a chance because tables are going to turn in that in that regard, right? Well, Tom Green is such a great absolute fighters. Marshall. No. Bothered by Jennings, and they play on, and now a foul. On Stigall of Butler. Just sloppy basketball being out here right now. To be honest with you, really sloppy basketball. I guess you expected a new team for Rick Petito trying to get in sync. Good block right there, but really, right now, both clubs playing very, very ineffectively. Both teams over the limit. Each team has committed eight fouls already here in the second half. I know a lot of people don't agree with me, and that's I respect their opinions. I do. I respect their Opinion I respect, for example, Mike DeCourcy before the game and Rick Bosage. We were all talking, a Louisville columnist, and they disagree with me, and I, I respect them. And I firmly believe college basketball starts too early. And I think that we lose too many great games because of all the talk with the Heisman, the PCS chatter. And I would like to see college basketball start right after Thanksgiving. But they make great points. Now you're suffocating, putting 30, 35 games yeah. within a shorter period of time. So I do understand that. Hopkins dumps it down. Howard lays it in and a foul. See, that's what they need out of this club. They need that post play out of Howard. We saw Zilch of that in the first half because he got in foul trouble. But you get a combination of Mack and Howard, and now you change the whole complexion of your offensive schemes. The foul on Preston. Howard played only four minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. They need him to be a huge factor down the stretch and all season. They need the Howard of two years ago, exactly. not last year, if they're going to approach what they accomplished last season. You know, it's amazing. Virginia Tech gets blown out by Kansas State. A pull in place two minutes in the first right. half. I don't know that any team plays harder in the country than, than Frank Martin's Wildcats. Well, Bob Knight told me yesterday on the phone we were talking. He said the one thing that impresses them about Kansas State is they're so physical yeah. and so tough on the inside. Yeah, most other teams would say too physical. <laughs> That they foul on every play. They certainly approach that line, but he's got a very talented team. The preseason pick to win the Big 12 is not Kansas, it's Kansas State. You still got to go through Lawrence, baby. Yeah. Even though I really underestimated Kansas. Stigall the miss. Seema the push. Offensive foul. And the Louisville crowd thinking that 
Maybe the Butler player Stigall undercut Siva there, got underneath him, but the call goes Butler's way. But that was an example of what Rick Pacino was talking to us about Siva before the before the game yeah. about being out of control, and there was a perfect example of that. And that's going to earn him some time on the bench. Andrew Smith in for Kyle Marshall for Butler. Number four on Siva. I like this kid Justice. I really do. I think he's going to give him a great effort every night. Good quality 12, 14 minutes a night off the bench. Rolls knocks it away, and it's off Stigall to the Cardinals. Stigall can't believe the call. Official made the right call. It was right in front of us. I can even see one eye. I mean, it's right in front of us. Now watch yeah. this. Oh, yeah. He definitely see the hand stick in there. Knocked out of bounds. You're not sure. I'm not sure. You're not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Does it matter you. I'm with you. Think? It doesn't matter. I was, uh, I had other concerns. I was having Kyle Singler flashbacks to the ACC uh, oh, wow. tournament from last year. I thought, I, I thought Preston Knowles oh. was going to come uh, flying into our laps. Kyle Singler, everybody's preseason. Probably player of the year. It's pretty nice, though, when you get a freshman like Irving. And Irving has the supporting cast of guys like Nolan Smith and Singler, yeah. where he doesn't have to come in and be that instant super, like a Harrison Morris has uh, to be at North Carolina. And Seth Curry's going to be a factor, too. The Absolutely. Hopkins to pull up from the wing. And a Louisville foul. Game is absolutely sloppy as can be right now. There is zero rhythm going yeah. on on the floor. Just a ton of fouls here in the second half, as you can see. And Smith to the line for Butler. Brad Stevens telling us this morning at shoot-around, Smith last year was the only new player in the program. They had 15 players, 14 returning players, and Smith. So every time they put something in or they taught something, everybody else had a head start on him, and he was playing catch-up all year. And he says the big fella is a lot more comfortable as a sophomore than he was last year. Well, he had a lot more playing time. By the way, Butler, their success they've had, they were right in the hunt there for the kids selling. Yeah. Along in North Carolina as well. And the recruiting finishing number two and number three. It doesn't matter. Louisville ball. Justice, nice patience. Buckles. Got it. Oh, Don't know if he meant to, but he got it. Glass. Jimmy B would say, the banks must be open, baby. <laughs> double double for Rakeem Buckles. We talked about him and Peyton Siva being two huge keys for the Cardinals this year. Justice the reach and foul, and Howard will go to the line when we come back. Howard's become a lot more active here in the second half. Great tradition here at Louisville, part of the Hall of Honor here for the new building, the 1986 National Championship Trophy. Consecutive Final Four for Tom Izzo, and that would be the second time in his great coaching career he would accomplish that feat. You talk about Rick Pitino as a future Hall of Famer. Tom Izzo's right in that same group. Oh, absolutely. And that was great news for the people of Michigan State that he decided to come back and not take that offer from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Hey, you talk about great history here in Louisville. They got the 1980 National Championship, the Doctors of Dunk, led by Donald Griffin. What about Denny Crum, the court named after him? Six Final Fours, two national titles. Think about all Americans like Wes Hunsell, Charlie Tyron Griffin. They've got other stars, Never Nervous, Purvis Ellison, Robin McRae, Billy Thompson out of Camden with Milt Wagner. There's Denny. Denny Crum. Loves his hoops. 30 years as head coach here at Louisville. Disciple of John Wooden. He was in West Was really a nice gesture down there by Ben Holland all these silly people. The empty seat. That's right, where Coach Wooden sat for every game. A turnover. Louisville not playing well. They got a back though. Justice. Van Zant the rebound. Checking. Numbers. Confirmed. On the pull up for three. And a foul on Mera, or is it Howard? I think we had, wait a minute, we got two officials. 
pointing at two different guys I think but I think the call is going on Mara of Louisville and that's going to send Howard back to the line. John Gaffney had a different look than John Higgins uh, did. Yeah, I think they definitely did. I think you're right. Two shots the rest of the way for both teams. Love this building, but the one thing you can't do here, mm. you can't tweet, man. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You're they not gotta get service. Some, no, I want you gotta go to tweet, man. You gotta go to add Dickie V. You gotta tweet there and go to my Facebook, the real Dick Vitale. See, there's all kinds of. You wouldn't believe the frauds out there, and I have to do the real Dick Vitale. How many followers do you have? I got over 50,000. You know, we're new at doing this. Uh, I don't know the exact number. Can't tweet it. Doesn't work. <laughs> I got the producer yell at me, tweet, tweet. Did you, did you, did you ever tweet? think, yeah. did you ever think you would tweet? Huh? I never did thought. Did you that. ever imagine? My daughters forced me into that. Your Two daughters, daughter named Grads. Right. They said, you must do it to help to promote the V Foundation. Raise some cash. The D there by Howard preventing the entry pass. Played a lot better defensively now. They just seem to have a better balance than their stuff. A great feed from Justice into Buckles and a Butler foul. If it's Howard, it's his fourth. But there were two defenders there. And it's on Alex Anglin, not on Matt Howard. Buckles to the line for two for Louisville. No, we're talking about Patino in the Hall of Fame. I mean, this year, when you think about it, Mike Krzyzewski has a chance. It would be an unbelievable accomplishment if it were to happen. But when the season started, he needed 35 W's to become the all-time winningest coach in the history of the game, surpassing his mentor. Well, he won 35 last yeah. year, but that yeah. is a tough, yeah. tough scenario. Just a matter of time, though, right? Oh, absolutely. There's no question. That's it. For sure. Still going strong, coaching Team USA as well as Duke. Let me tell you, that Team USA stick helps him big time in the world of recruiting. It really does. I mean, the kids get excited when they know a guy coaches LeBron and Kobe. Matt buries the three. Butler is within 11. 11, and Rick Pitino's not happy. Shouldn't be happy. They had this game iced, and right now it's going to be a little bit, but they're going to start to lock it up. A 7-0 run for the Bulldogs right now, and still a ton of time with all the fouls and all the whistles. The clock is not moving very quickly at all. You know, I credit right now Brad Stevens not having that quitter's attitude, and he's really been in the face of some of his players yeah. about playing with some pride and playing with a little feeling, and they're starting to do that here in the second half. Well, that pride is what got them all the way to the national championship game a year ago, and one of the big questions heading into this season is, Will there be a Butler of this year? Of course, it could be Butler. Who are some of the mid-majors you're well, keeping an eye on? You know, I mentioned Detroit. Okay, they're 0-2 right now. But they're two losses at New Mexico and at Syracuse. But they're going to be really, I think, Detroit Mercy. Ray McCallum's got some good kids. His son is going to be a player. Coastal Carolina. I mean, watch them. And Wofford. Wofford was in a tournament last year. Played a tough game with Clemson, which uh, stayed on the Missouri Valley. Old Dominion lost a tough game the other day to Georgetown. I mean, I really, Virginia Commonwealth, you think about Cal, Santa Barbara, San Diego State. Yeah, I was, uh, was going to ask yeah. you about them. They're on ESPN 2 in about an hour against Gonzaga. Great early season game. And Steve another Fisher, foul. former coach at Michigan, led him to that national title. All five starters back for the Aztecs this year. Matt called for the foul. And Knowles to the line for two. Kid named Leonard's supposed to be really outstanding for them. Steve Fisher, and a good football program down there, too. Plus, what a place to live. Are you kidding me? San Diego, what a place to live. Almost as good as Sarasota now. Sarasota and Bradenton area. Lakewood Not Nash. bad. Not bad. Not bad. Tomorrow morning, I'll be right at the Broken Egg, all the papers out, having a good omelet, hoping and praying that you were with me and we'd have a blast. Well, just make sure you get to New York on Thursday. We'll be there. We'll be on court. So here it is right now. They're going to start playing some defense like they did earlier. And now you're going to get back the ball. 
Crowd trying to lend a hand. Oh, and it works. Sloppy, sloppy pass by Howard. Sloppy pass. Good foul there by Anglin. Almost intentional. Yeah. Made sure Buckles didn't have a chance. He went for the ball. So many times over the years, Rick Pitino's teams, the offense comes from the defense. See a sloppy pass, good anticipation, step right in the passing lane, Buckles. He went for the ball. Sophomore out of Miami, 6'8", Rakeem Buckles. Last year averaged under four points and four rebounds per game. Conservatively, those numbers should more than double this year with the extra minutes he's going to get. Well, that should easily happen, but you know, right now, you got to convert free throws. I mean, you're going to go to the line quite a bit right now, Louisville. You can put the game in the books and make it easy for your coach by making free throws. They're 15 of 22 tonight. But one thing about Rick Pitino, you watch him on that sideline. He coaches every possession like it's the most important possession. And you hope the players, when you're a coach, have that same attitude that it becomes contagious. Matt, big another time. three. He's big time, my friends. He's big time. He's one of America's elite perimeter players. 25 points for Shelvin Mack. At one point tonight, Butler had 21. He had 17 of them. Barra to Jennings. Bounce pass inside. Buckles. Score the basket. Score the basket. Oh. Oh. Got about 22,700 to agree with you. Mac, not this time. Well, that would have changed the whole complexion of that three had gone down. Still a lot of time. Knowles, another air ball. I mean, they're going to learn to score. They're going to know score of time, and I don't think they have any idea. They just played on one pace, Louisville. Knowles injured. Remember the bruised thigh that he came into the game with, but this is different as we can see him reaching wow. for his right calf. <laughs> Preston Knowles, a very valuable player, leader, senior, defender. And in a tremendous amount of pain right now on the court. Well, they got a lot of guys. Rick Pitino can run a lot of people in and out of the lineup, but Preston Knowles is not just another guy on this team. He's a very, well, very important player. You know, experienced player when you talk yeah. about Knowles and Swapshire is out of the lineup right now as well. It's tough to tell. It was after he reached the court when he grabbed for the calf. Hopefully, hopefully, it's nothing serious, nothing more than a cramp, but impossible to tell right now. Hey, one thing, the effort by Butler in the second half certainly surpasses their effort in the first half. I mean, in terms of just their tenacity, they're playing with more tenacity. Couldn't get up. Grabbed him again. Seems like a cramp. Terrence Jennings is going to help carry him off the court. Can't speculate. I have no clue. So they'll continue to work on Knowles, who's still in a tremendous amount of pain over on the Louisville bench. An 11 point lead for the Cardinals with a 5 11 to go. Plenty of time on that clock. Matt gets out and knocks down a couple of threes. This could be really an exciting moment for Butler in terms of coming back. I'll be honest, I thought this game was locked away. Yep. I really did. The way they were playing, he went to the bench. The Louisville played sloppy to allow him back in the game. It'll stay with the Butler. Good D there by Justice. You like what he's given them tonight, huh? Yeah, I really do. I think that he gives them that toughness, plays on the defensive end, plays hard. He was originally, Dick, a non-scholarship player when Samuels decided to leave early and go to the NBA. Justice got a scholarship. He was a walk-on. Mr. Basketball in the state. I think a lot of people question the size. I think there's too much delay in the game. I think the officials got to start moving the game. 
There's too much conversing and just get the game and roll. And trying to keep the Louisville assistant coaches on the bench. Howard with a tough spinning shot and draws a foul call that is awfully unpopular here in Louisville. Well, a few calls have been unpopular, but they're slowly getting back. You can get this in the single digits, baby. Buckles the foul. You be the judge. I had the left arm down. If he, I mean, sitting here, you say no call. Sitting here, you say absolutely no call. Got to make those foul shots. You're down 11. You got to convert veteran player, player of the year two years ago. Hey, Brad Stevens is working and working on his players. It's not over. It's not over. Keep battling. Missed them both. That's a nightmare. You're a coach sitting on that sideline. Oh, I went to television, man. You have those <laughs> moments. Of course, you lose all my hair. Under five to go here at the KFC Yum Center. First regular season game for the Louisville men's basketball team. Buckles, yes. Buckles got to get a little bounce. They have no clue, though, Dan. No clue of time, score, and situation. Shoot they fast. just play. Yeah, shoot fast. Norad. Howard and another foul. He's gonna go back now for another deuce. You don't want to see him get the hat trick. Buckles again. This building, by the way, not this season, but next season is going to host a sub-regional first and yep, second first rounds and second of the NCAA round. tournament. And why not? Can Beautiful. Hold more than 22,000. It's a first-class facility. The people here love their basketball. You know what else they love? We've seen tonight. They love their soccer. They, uh, some of the members of the soccer team, the head coach, were out of the court. Number one team in the nation, and they also number one seed. But ready for yep. this? There are only two soccer teams in the NCAA that are undefeated: Louisville and, and Butler. Oh, really? Butler's wow. undefeated as well. That? They're both 16 Good and 9 with nugget. three ties. There are 13 seed in the NCAA tournament. Butler and Louisville is number one. They also honored the Louisville baseball team uh, during a timeout of the first half. Three straight Big East champions. That's saved quite a bit because there's some good teams yep. in the Big East. Let's see right now. They got a really D up here. Tough shot. Can't believe that shot. I can't believe that shot. But there's a second up for size inside. You're right. It's, it, they're under orders to play quick and shoot fast. But late in the game with the lead, they're taking bad shots with time on the clock. And they got bailed out here by the weak side rebound by Steven Van Trees. He looks like he's really going to be a factor for that. Well, he told us before the game that he likes some of the things that he brings. Big, strong, and there was a great example of that. But really, you're right. Shot selection is so important. Understanding shot selection. That's one of the keys of all great teams. Our buddy and right now our colleague Bob Knight was a great disciple of teaching that. I, I mean, always the principle of taking a high percentage shot. Butler will retain possession as we step aside for the under four timeout. A 13 point lead for the Cardinals. Rick Pitino all fired up here in the regular season opener. This exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the makers of Theraflu, Serious Power. The Cardinals men's basketball locker room, two of seven locker rooms here in this new building. The men and women each have one. And then there are five others for the number of teams who may be here for various events and also the practice court, which is adjacent to the main court here at the KFC Yum Center. They did it right here. Hey, a little different than what I had back in the 70s. <laughs> yeah, University. I guess. That's right. I mean, a little different. Ronald Norris had a frustrating night. He really so is Brad Stevens. Only three teams scored 70 points against Butler last year, and all three beat Minnesota, Clemson, and Georgetown. As we mentioned, they were 8-4 and four at one point. Then they won 25 in a row before ultimately losing to Duke in the national championship game. So you could lose early and still be awfully good late. A tie-up, and it'll be Butler ball. See, right now, it's a little growing up time for Louisville to understand 
a situation. You got the bleed. You're in command. You're playing a club that's rated. You're not rated. You're at home. Your first game. You got to understand now what the clock is, what the time is, and how to get a good shot. Only take good shots, high percentage shots. Good news by Kenny Klein. He's the best. In the yes. Best. One of the best in the he business. He is. He is one of the best. SID of Louisville coming over and telling us looks like just a cramp for Preston Knowles. There's so many quality guys out there who do a great job with unbelievable hours at the respective schools. Howard lays it up and in. Count the basket. Tell you what, he's a different player here in the second half with the foul situation. So at least he'll leave here no matter what the score is with some confidence. Look at Kenny Klein. There's Kenny Klein. Got a great gift. I know Rick Pitino doesn't want me to say this, but he loves so much the job he's done here. He bought him a beautiful, beautiful new car. When are you going to buy me a car? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on now. Uh, come on, all the cash you make, when are you going to buy me a car? Kenny Klein, I seek your praises. He also has more red ties than anybody in America. Don't you know that your boss buys you a nice new car? That's, that's pretty nice. Who's our boss? Well, no, I mean, in his case. No, I know, but who's our boss? Well, Norby Williamson, why don't Norby buy me a car? I mean, 32 years, you think you'd call up and say, hey, Dad, has a new car for you. You've done a great job for us. I mean, come on now. Three minutes to go. Buckles. That's a good one. That hurts big time. Wide open. 16 for Rakeem Buckles. The battle, the battle, the battle, trying to get the single digits. I mean, Buckles building off the game that he had against California yeah. last year in the tournament. He was 29. Norad slips inside. Hopkins long on the three. That's Brick City USA right there, baby. They're ready to put this one in the book. Matt Stevens, I think, has a lot he can talk to his team about in terms of now getting them mentally ready to face the season. This might be a great learning situation. Dick Butler is shooting 29% Ouch. in this game. And if you take Shelvin Mack out of it, they're shooting 19% in this game. Pretty tough to win, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty Mack's, tough to win. Mack's been out for a while. Looked like cramps for him. He went to the locker room, came back, but he has not re-entered the game. You know, last year you talked about quality wins. Looking at Butler, they beat teams like before. He, not even talking tournament play. Ohio State, Xavier, Northwestern, UCLA, in non-league play. Then they got a big one against Duke, a rematch of the national championship, December the fourth in Newark, on ESPN on the, a Saturday afternoon. Pretty good defensive numbers for Rick Pitino to enjoy. Norad lays it in. They got a little bit out of Norad offensively. He's got to utilize his driving ability and slashing ability to put some points on the board. You can't just become one-dimensional on a perimeter with Matt. Coming up next here on ESPN at the end of this game, we'll take you to the Michigan State-South Carolina game. Tom Izzo coming back, one of the biggest stories in the offseason. I can tell you going from Kentucky to the Boston Celtics when they won 14, it's not a whole lot of fun. He should stay at Michigan State. It's all he does is win championships, both in the Big Ten and go to the Final Four. He's obviously put his heart and soul into that program. They've had incredible success. He's someone that represents uh, all the right things. He's in position to be a Hall of Famer, not a question of if, it's just a matter of when. Well, Steve Lavin. Reiterating what we talked about a little bit earlier, the man's a Hall of Famer, Tom Izzo. Looking forward to uh, seeing that game against South Carolina, the Michigan State Duke game in a couple of weeks. You talked about that we have, and what a battle it's going to be in the Big Ten this year. What the, the league most people think is the best in the country. Oh, I think it is. I don't think there's any doubt about it. When you look up on top, especially, I mean, everybody talks, obviously, Illinois and talks the likes of Ohio State and Michigan State and Purdue. Think about what Purdue would have been with Hummel. They're still going to be very good. But you throw in the likes. Nobody mentions Wisconsin. Yeah. And as long as nobody Bo, ever mentions I, Wisconsin. I know, but as long as Bo Ryan is there, I mean, obviously they got a great opportunity and they should do well. You know, you mentioned Wisconsin. I want to say right now, I did not see the game, but I read some articles. 
When you throw the football, man, and you're up 55, 60 points late in the game, I have a problem with that. I really have a problem with that embarrassing, humiliating kids. Okay? I didn't see the game, though. I'm only going with what people said. So I give them the benefit of the doubt. Talking about Wisconsin yeah. blowing out Indiana. But it should be a great, great year in Big Ten basketball. But let me say this what time is it? As good as a coach he is, he's a better person. Nor had the quick foul, and Brad Stevens not willing to concede anything just yet. Gonna make him earn it at the line. Great humanitarian, he really is. Terrence Jennings will shoot a couple. It's been a sloppy second half. To put it very bluntly, there's been zero rhythm here. It's been a good effort by Brad Stevens' kids to come back, to make it a little competitive. The Louisville got really sloppy in the second half as well, but played so well in the first half, especially with a new cast of players. Uh, Dick, there have been 41 personal fouls in this game. And that just takes away the rhythm of the game. It takes away any kind of timing. No doubt about it, though, the building is better than advertised. It is absolutely awesome, baby, with a capital F. Jim Host and all the people involved should be so proud of what they put here in Louisville. Norad off the glass again. See, they're going to get him involved offensively. He thinks too much of passing the basketball. He's got to use his driving ability to score. Howard to call for the block. Number four on him. And Elisha Justice will shoot a couple for the Cardinals. So I think teams like the Butlers really do themselves so much good by playing quality competition. I look at Gonzaga, I was looking at some of their games. They got San Diego State, Kansas State, maybe Duke. They're at Notre Dame. They got Baylor in Dallas. Baylor's going to be very good, especially when they get done back to go with the kid Perry Jones, the diaper dandy. They play Xavier, they play Memphis. I mean, that's really getting your club ready for conference play. Well, the Xavier, Butler, Gonzaga, Memphis, they're all in it together. They, they, they all try to load up on their schedules as much as they can before they get to conference play. It's a John Cheney theory. That's right. John Cheney. I miss John Cheney. We don't have enough characters in the world of basketball. He was, we really don't. He was something we, else. We had some great characters yeah. in this game. We had the people on that sideline. Louis Cornesecca. Rolly Massimino. Well, he's Massimino. still coaching them all. John Thompson. Yeah. I mean, come on, Jimmy V, Al McGuire. Good characters. They brought personality. Siva with a reach in foul. He looks at the official. He says, Me? You're not going to get away with that, yeah, Peyton. But you know who the next guy he looked at was? His coach. Yeah. <laughs> Siva just came back in and just picked <laughs> up his fifth foul. He can't reach in. I mean, he's got to know that. And Especially, you're right, there's still, you can see obviously Louisville's got some talent, they got depth, but there's still a learning curve here in terms of understanding time, score, situation, that kind of thing. I mean, why would you want to stop the clock and put a guy in the free throw line? Yeah. You stop the clock, give him a chance to get points without the clock moving. Well, the story tonight for Louisville, defense leading to offense. Yeah, they did a great job with their pressure, especially early in the game, utilizing a lot of people, making some threes. That really created the big lead, got up by 20. Really dominating in the first half. Actually embarrassed Butler in the first half. They've held him to 32%, nine steals, six blocks. Good numbers well, at the defensive end. You know, you think about the exhibition seasons that just took place. A lot of schools, you look at some of the matchups there. Auburn loses to Columbus State. Bradley gets beat by Quincy. DePaul gets beat by Lewis University. Nevada by Seattle Pacific. Tennessee by Indianapolis. Xavier by Bellamont. I mean, it's unbelievable when you hear those scores. I know it's exhibition, but this Division I, it tells me one thing. There are a lot of players, a lot of kids that don't get the kind of recognition sure. they deserve. Sure. And they really slip by. Another Butler foul. See, a lot of guys, everybody wants the McDonald's. We have music coming in now. And that's the fifth foul on Alex Anglin. He is fouled out of the game. Or is it Norad? Excuse me. Norad has fouled out of the game. And Justice at the line. 
See, that's not good defense when you foul. Good teams that play solid team defense don't put those kind of foul totals in the book. And Charlie Butler did not do that last year. Rebound Smith. Under two minutes to go. Louisville's going to win the opener here for the first regular season of men's game at the new KFC Young Center. Mack follows up his own miss. On blocks. Jennings with another one. So the one thing they got some shot blockers inside. Oh, you got to catch that and jam that baby. Bring it out. Take some time off the clock. Take some time off the clock. Play with a little basketball IQ. And Marshall fouls again. It's almost as if Brad Stevens, I mean, it, it's not going to happen here today, but he's saying, hey, guys, pretend it's like a five-point game and coach him for tomorrow. Just keep fouling and let's run our two-minute drill and see if we can get back into the game. But, I mean, they're not going to get back into this one. People starting to file out in a young yep. center. You know, everybody wants those McDonald's All Americans. When I was coaching, man, if I can get a Wendy's, I was happy. Down here, they don't want too many young centers. They want to have some McDonald's All Americans. Nick Petito's going to get his share. Talk about recruiting classes. The class going into Kentucky is off the charts. Yep. And also, Duke. Austin Rivers is going to be so special. Doc Sun. Yep, Doc yep. Sun. Now Brad Stevens empties the bench. He's better than Doc. I saw Doc in high school, okay? He's better than Doc in high school. Now, will he be better than Doc later? I don't know. But he was better than his dad in high school. And the third Plumley, Marshall going to do next year as well. It's going to be a, an announcer's nightmare. <laughs> Miles Mason and Marshall. Nice move. Howard left hand. See, that's the kid that was player of the year in the conference two years ago. Very effective down in the low box. Good scoring ability. They're going to win the end. They're going to win a lot of games. I mean, what we saw tonight is an aberration. This is not Butler basketball that we witnessed tonight. Couldn't handle the pressure early. Howard had picked up some fouls early, so he barely was a factor, barely played in the first half. They gave him a run through the middle part of the second half, but in the end just could not overcome such a large deficit. You know, you said it so well, Dan. Really, they had a really three major factors. Number one, Howard getting in foul trouble took away any kind of interior scoring. It was just simply one-dimensional and back. Number two, their defense really broke down. Their defense was so ineffective in that first half. They didn't communicate. They, maybe because of Howard wasn't on the floor, but they did not play Butler defense. And number three, they shot so poorly. Really were so ineffective offensively. On will save it as we go into the final minute. Coming up next here on ESPN, we will send you to East Lansing, where the Michigan State Spartans are hosting South Carolina. Michigan State leading 18 to 13 right now in the early going. They're so tough to beat up at home. The zone gets rocking and rolling. They sure do. Butler's next game. Will be against Ball State. They'll go back home and play Ball State on Saturday. And Louisville is going to stay at home. They'll play Jackson State here on Saturday. And now the crowd booing as Butler continues to foul. So Kyle Couric heads to the line now for the Cardinals. You know, he's been quiet in the game. We haven't seen really much out of Keurig. He had that big game, as you talked about, the close Freedom Hall. And he had those 22 points in the second half against Syracuse, made six big threes. But, you know, you factor in Keurig and you throw in Knowles when he gets healthy and you bring in Swapshire, and that really adds a little bit more depth to that club. Dick's 56 fouls and 72 free throws in this game. And <laughs> Howard. Of course, for a guy who didn't play in the first half, he's going to wind up with some pretty good numbers tonight. He's got 21 points and time rebounds. It's amazing. But he's going to be a solid. I mean, let's face it, if they're going to win and win big, he has to be yeah. productive. Now, now the crowd is, is really sure? angry. I mean, it really is. Yeah. I had a foul in like crazy. Spoiler, this really takes the game back. 50 years. Grant Leindecker with the foul. Well, Brad Stevens is trying to 
I don't think he's trying to prove a point. I think he's just trying to work on something they might need to work on later in the season in a close game, but it's sure not winning many fans here in Louisville. Well, I think what he's working on psychologically will let the kids know never ever to give up. Yeah. Never ever to give up. And this is a strategy we're going to try. Foul, I hope to shoot three for two. Whistles a workout here tonight with all the foul calls. Now a steal. Mara. Oh, Mara's so he can jump. He's like, got some hops. That's the Linguini in me, man. That's the Linguini, the Rigatoni. Look at how he's putting up some big numbers. And draws the foul as well. 23 now for Howard. 21 of them in the second half. Right. Coach looking at him saying, hey. Where were you in the first half? He plays like that in the first half. Things might be a little different. Look at Mara. Look at Mara Sky and take a picture of that baby. That's legit. That's legit. That's big time. Dick for Butler tonight. Max got 25. Howard's got 23. The rest of the team has 22. The point totals are, are higher really than they should be in the game. It's just all the fouls and free throws and stoppages and so forth. But the uh, the air went out of the balloon in this one a long, a long time ago. A long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, Buckles looks like he's going to have a solid year this year. For yeah. He really does. 16 and 11 tonight. I think Kurek's going to be a good player for that. Watching the practice and really shoot the ball. Mara out, Jennings out. Watch him in the pregame warm-ups and watch them shoot Kirk and shoot the basket. Yes, he can. Louisville will be in the in the thick of it in the Big East. Maybe not at the top. They're picked middle of the pack, but with the depth they have and the coach they have, they'll beat some people. Hopkins for three. And you know what? You'll get shocked along the way by somebody on that double off in the set. I can't believe it. They haven't given up this total in a long time. This is where you could put a rule in. You know, it's one and one after seven fouls. It's two shots after They've ten. They've tried so many different ways. Well, to you just go to two in the ball. I'd say at 12 fouls, you go to two in the ball, and then it stops. It stops instantly because there's no point foul. Because this is not good for the game. No, it's not good for the game at all. It's horrible. It's not good for the announcers either. <laughs> I mean, come on now. It's not good for us either. Come on, the BBDI, the Vital Ball Dome Index is getting bored right now because it's already put in the calculator a W for Louisville. It's past the BBDI's bedtime right now. Exactly, too. Yes. That's another one. Justice out. I like Justice. Rick Petito gave him a nice tap on the head. Plays really hard. Yeah. Look at this sloppy basketball. Woo! But it's November 16th. Chris Smith lays it in. And about we're done. Time. About time. About time. In the first regular season game for the men's team here in Louisville, Rick Pitino and the Cardinals beat Butler 88 to 73. And this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The college hoops tip off marathon.